in, in our everyday life, we appear to be uh, continuously confronted with the perception of temporal features of the world. And uh, so we perceive events as succeeding each other. We distinguish events that are past from events that are present and future. And we take different cognitive and emotional attitudes towards them. So, for example, we may recollect some events in our past but not in our future and uh, we think our past is somewhat fixed and uh, done with while we think or hope that our future is somewhat more open. And um, we may fear or feel anxious about some negative event that uh, lies or we expect in our future but we certainly wouldn't feel anxious about events, even negative events that happen in our past. And as uh, Lucretius once noticed, we fear death, that is our future non-existence, but we don't seem to fear our arguably symmetrical phenomenon of our past prenatal non-existence. Now, and finally we think that time passes. We use metaphors to express that. We say that time flies, time um, flows. And, um, and, and it is tempting to to provide a, a somewhat naive picture of what this amounts to. We tend to think that uh, there is a, an objective distinction between pastness, presentness and futurity and we tend to think that future events somehow approach us and uh, they suddenly become present and they immediately uh, move on to our past and they become more and more past. Now, in spite of the intuitive appeal of this uh, picture, when we try to understand exactly what uh, uh, the passage of time amounts to, we encounter uh, great difficulties, some of which appear to be insurmountable. Now, part of this has to do with the fact that time, of course, cannot be perceived directly. We cannot touch it, we cannot see it. So we have to infer whatever we know about it indirectly. But uh, Philosophers are quite good at coping with that uh, adverse epistemic circumstances and uh, the worst troubles come from two other quarters. First, all the attempts to explicate in clear details what the passage of time amounts to um, have been argued to be inconsistent. And of course, we tend to think that inconsistent theories are false. And um, secondly, uh, the idea that time passes appears to fly in the face of some of our best scientific theories, uh, chiefly Einstein's theory of relativity. Now, the suspicion that the passage of time involves contradiction has been with us since the dawn of Western thought. Perhaps Parmenides was the first one to uh, articulate an argument to the effect that uh, time and change involve contradictions and are hence unreal. And his disciple Zeno, perhaps more famously, argued that motion, which is a, a change of location in time, is contradictory and hence unreal. Now, m many have thought that these arguments are pieces of sophistry, but they proved to be extremely recalcitrant and uh, they're still here with us today. Bertrand Russell conceded to Zeno that we live in an unchanging world. And um, in 1908, uh, an idealist British philosopher called uh, John Ellis McTaggart uh, published a paper called The Unreality of Time that has shaped the debate uh, in the philosophy of time ever since. He also argued that the idea of passage, that is the idea that time, non-present time become present, is inconsistent, hence Time is unreal. Um, now to relativity. Uh, you may know that uh, under a standard interpretation, the theory of relativity has a consequence that uh, the notion of simultaneity is relative to the observer. And this means that given to any events, we, I and you, may disagree as to whether they are simultaneous or not. And this clearly entails that we may disagree as to whether they are both present or whether one of them is present and the other present, uh, past, etc., etc. And this clearly uh, constitutes a major difficulty for our naive 
account of what passage is. Um, now, as a consequence of this, the, the uh, philosophical arena is divided between those who think that time does pass and, uh, and those who think it doesn't, the anti-realist. Now, after the Einstein's publication of, of uh, uh, his famous paper in 1905, and especially after 1908, most philosophers, uh, analytic philosophers and scientists, convinced themselves that the passage of time is illusory, by which we mean uh, to say that it is an artifact of our cognitive apparatus, pretty much like colors, if you want. Ah, you know, colors are not part of reality, uh, and they are, to some extent, an artifact of our cognitive apparatus. And likewise, temporal properties, at least passage, would be uh, something like that. Um, now, I belong to those philosophers who, on the contrary, uh, think that uh, there must be a robust sense in which time passes. So, while those, the anti-realists, those who think that time does not pass, owe us an explanation as to why it seems to pass, why we have the illusion that it passes. Einstein called it a, a, a persistent illusion. And uh, people like me who think that time does pass must uh, explain, well, the two things must try to provide a coherent account of passage, uh, which is already something that has eluded us for 2,000 years. And, uh, and uh, 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 we must explain why it is that it seems to be incompatible with theories like relativity. Now, um, I don't think, as it, as it happens often in philosophy, I, don't, I never came uh, uh, to a verdict in this respect. I don't know uh, if time passes or not. I tend to think that the, the value of what we are trying to do is, is rather to contribute to the common endeavor, uh, 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 to the dialectic, uh, 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 and our common endeavor to understand uh, time and passage. Thank you.